It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if the sun suddenly went out? How? Somebody just turn it off? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. What would happen to the Earth if the sun suddenly switched off is probably the single most popular question submitted to what if. And it's so we're talking suddenly switched off. So the sun is a nuclear reactor. It's a fusion reactor. So we're talking what if somebody emergency shut down this reactor the same way a fission reactor trips, even though the sun is fusion. I guess this would involve a sudden removal of fuel already. A search for what if the sun went out turns up lots of excellent articles thoroughly analyzing the situation. However, there are a few aspects of this scenario that I thought other answers were missing, so I've decided to add my two cents. Okay, this should be good. We won't worry about exactly how it happens. We'll just assume that the sun, for some reason, becomes a cold, inert sphere. What would sure. I mean, after all, it's not like we have a backup sun or anything. I like that sound effect, too. Consequences be for us here on Earth. Better astronomy. Without the sun, ground... He's listing benefits. <laughs> sure, better astronomy. Yeah, you don't have that big thing that effectively adds too much light blocking your sky more than half the time. Observatories would be able to operate around the clock. The cooler air would create less atmospheric noise, which would reduce the load on adaptive optics systems and allow for sharper images. <laughs> this is hilarious. So what, we're talking a little over eight minutes later, which is how long it takes for light to reach the Earth, as well as the gravitational effects that... We don't need sunglasses or sunscreen, so it's going to save everybody some money. <laughs> Proof satellite service. When a communication satellite passes in front of the sun, the sun can drown out the satellite's radio signal, causing an interruption in service. Deactivating the sun would solve this problem. Sure, it would improve it until things start to get bad on Earth. <laughs> until your receivers start to freeze. Uh, what's another one? Within a week or so, you're going to get to have snowball fights in the Sahara Desert. Easier trade. Time zones make trade more expensive. It's hard to do business with someone time if their zone. office hours don't overlap with yours. If the sun went out, it would eliminate the need for time zones, allowing us to switch to coordinated universal time and give a boost to the global economy. <laughs> sure. Um, this would last on the order of hours before, you know, your supply lines freeze. But yeah, if you're able to get that coordinated in a few minutes, you might get a few benefits over a few hours or so. As far as your nuclear power plants, they would just keep running until the grid starts to fail. Of course, at that point, would you really want to cool down your reactors? All of the molten nuclear fuel might be what's going to keep you warm at this point. <laughs> I'm kidding. Reduced risk of solar flares. In 1859, a, a massive solar flare awesome. and geomagnetic storm hit the Earth. A basic principle of physics is that changing magnetic fields induce currents and wires. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for us, by 1859, we had wrapped the Earth in telegraph wires. The storm caused powerful currents in those wires, knocking out communications, and in some cases, causing telegraph equipment to catch fire. Since 1859, we've wrapped the Earth in a lot more wires. <laughs> if the 1859 solar flare and storm hit us today, it's estimated that the economic damage to the US alone would be several trillion dollars. Which is why you need to prepare for something like this by early detection and then doing controlled shutdowns so it doesn't effectively turn everything off. You don't have transformers catch fire or anything like that. This is a real event that grid operators and reactor operators prepare for. And we even have procedures that, that go along with it. I mean, granted, as far as the nuclear reactor operators are concerned. It's the same as any sort of grid event involving uh, switching to emergency buses and controlled shutdowns. But ultimately, if you prepare for it, you can do planned outages on the order of hours compared to an unplanned outage where you're not prepared and it could essentially shut down your whole system for months. So a real thing, but you can prepare for it every hurricane which has ever hit the U.S. combined. If the sun went out, this threat would be eliminated. We'd also be safe from the hurricanes since the ocean would be frozen. Cheap. <laughs> yeah, after months, the ocean would eventually freeze. Though in less than one month, the atmosphere would actually start to liquefy, so you can make billions selling bottled air. <laughs> Liquid air.
Bridges. The Department of Transportation estimates that it will cost $20 billion per year over the next 20 years to repair and maintain all U.S. bridges. Many U.S. bridges are over water. Without the sun, we could save money by simply driving on a strip of asphalt laid across the ice. Safer children. According to health- <laughs> Really? Are you talking about kids getting locked in vehicles? Birds, babies younger than six months should be kept out of direct sunlight. Without sunlight, our children would be safer. This is hilarious. Obviously, the health risk would be so much worse without the sun, but I like the way he's thinking. You also don't have to worry about mad scientists making solar doom lasers. And nuclear power companies wouldn't have to compete with solar anymore because that's effectively useless at this point, or I guess I should say more useless. Safer pilots. Many people sneeze when exposed to bright sunlight. The reasons for this reflux are unknown, but in some situations, it's speculated that it may pose a danger to pilots during flight. If the sun went dark, we could mitigate this potential aviation hazard. Just gotta land Stable on the dust ice. orbits. Without sunlight, there would be no point in Robertson drag, which means we'd finally be able to place dust into a stable orbit around the sun without the orbits decaying. I'm not sure whether anyone wants to do that, but you never. <laughs> Okay, now we're getting into some weird things. All right, sure. Oh. Safer parsnip. Wild parsnip is a surprisingly nasty plant. Its leaves contain chemicals called... <laughs> this is turning into a Salmonella video, and I love it. Fumarins, ...which can be absorbed by human skin without causing symptoms at first. However, when the skin is then exposed to sunlight, even days or weeks later, the furocumarins cause a nasty chemical burn. This is called phytophotodermatitis. A darkened sun would liberate us from the parsnip threat. In conclusion, if the... I never would have guessed the parsnip one. That, that had me going. I guess one other benefit is you don't have to mow your lawn anymore because no more photosynthesis, no more plants. Point out, we would see a variety of benefits across many areas of our lives. Are there very, very briefly downsides to this scenario? Just one. <laughs> yeah, it says humans. Life could theoretically continue on Earth. If you're talking some deep undersea microbial life. Because after all, the Earth, there wouldn't be no heat source. I guess your residual heat source at this point would all be geothermal from the Earth's core. The Earth would also be drifting somewhere. Though I guess in this scenario, did he say the sun's mass went away or it's just not? If the sun's mass didn't go away, then I guess it's left still orbiting this dense, this one solar mass black sphere. I guess you're going to have to hope some aliens uh, figure out how to turn it on since Earth isn't drifting through space where it has a chance of eventually getting within the habitable zone of another star and slowly melting over the course of millions of years and the ice slowly melting over the course of millions of years, but okay, I get the point. I'll freeze and die. Uh, this is hilarious as always. Thanks so much for the recommendation and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.